Hello and welcome. My name is Luca Burton and I will be your teacher today. Let's see together how to install Red Hat Ansible Automation Platform via Red Hat Ansible Automation Platform Operator on Red Hat OpenShift Container Platform. First of all, let's connect via the web console to the OpenShift cluster. Uh, let's enter the username and password. In my case, I'm using kube admin and secret password, but feel free to customize in your environment. This configuration might vary and usually are provided by your cluster administrator. Once we got a successful login, we get the main dashboard of OpenShift. This might be familiar to you, or, uh, and this is one of the latest release, one of the latest uh, 4.9. Let me uh, magnify a little bit so we can all read my screen. Okay, so this is the main dashboard. Um, the main component is the menu bar on the left and this big area where we can see all the data of our cluster, the CPUs and uh, um, all the resources of our cluster. So how to install the operator? Well, there is an operator section and the best part is operator hub. This acts like a marketplace where we can select different type of uh, solution provided by Red Hat or Red Hat Park Partner. This is a great resource because there are many options for a lot of interesting things and underline it relies on Kubernetes operators. So these are standard resources that help us to install instances and additional component to our cluster. In my case it's taking a while uh, behind the scene is connecting to some remote server and uh, fetching the all available resources. As you can see, the resources are categorized in uh, different categories and also by the maturity of a project. Let me scroll down a little bit and I find out Ansible Automation Platform Operator. Cool, this is latest edition 2.3 in my case. And uh, as you can see, super easy and everything is well documented. The only things that we need to do is actually click the install button. As you can see, there is all the step-by-step -step that we need to follow in order to install the operator in our cluster. Okay, there are a few options that uh, we can uh, configure. So as you can see, we can install the uh, latest 2.2 or 2.3 and we can decide to apply to all the namespaces or only a specific namespace in my in our cluster and also customize the name of the namespace where we install the operator uh, it's super easy is only checkbox that we can uh, uh, select and change but uh, my suggestion is to keep on uh, the main channel and uh, almost I think that the default are okay for uh, uh, the majority of people. Okay, we can decide the uh, update strategy, of course, uh, if we want manual or automatic. And as you can see in the right panel, there are a list of uh, the instances included in this operator. After clicking the install button, everything will be executed under the scene. As you can see, we need only to wait a few minutes and the operator will be available. There are some messages on the bottom part that are sharing information about what type of uh, deployment resource are already available. But we're gonna get a green mark soon. Here we go. Cool. So now, Ansible Automation Platform Operator is, install, is installed inside our Red Hat OpenShift cluster. Yay! 
Okay, but probably we would like to take a closer look now on the newest operator. So, super easy, let's jump on the button and uh, we gonna reach out the main dashboard of the operator. As you can see, this operator is under the project AAP, that is uh, an acronym for Ansible Automation Platform and provide an automation controller, automation backup, automation controller, backup, uh, a lot of interesting instances. The measure are automation controller and uh, private automation hub. These two resources are fundamental and uh, the operator will take care of all the dependencies such as the database, Postgres 14th in this case, and the behind the scene configuration. For further detail, let's just take a look on the install guide officially provided by Red Hat. But let me show you how to create an automation controller. Just hit create automation controller and uh, you should enter the name of this machine and you can customize also additional parameters such as uh, the name of the admin, user, the email address and the secret that we would like to use. If we don't provide the secret, it will create a password for us. There are many other details that we can customize as you can see, but uh, for the full description, let's refer to the install manual because this parameter can change version to version and is easy to refer there. Anyway, for the sake of this video, once we customize everything and we are ready to go, just hit the create button and under the hood, the operator is going to communicate with OpenShift and create a new Ansible controller instance. As you can see, the status now is running and our example Ansible controller is ready to go. Inside the AAP namespace, everything seems uh, correct. You can review also the, all the configuration. So if something is not uh, fitting your needs, you can customize and we can see that is actually running. That's great because uh, the operator creates also the resource association. As you can see, there is a WebSocket, Postgres 13, and also the configuration, the secret, all the important things for running our containers in a safe environment. So that's great. And you can also reveal the password for the admin user. This is my current one. And as you can see, it's completely random. So just copy and connect to the login interface. Isn't easy? I think so. So there are more details that you can take a look. So this is a normal container inside my OpenShift cluster. As you can see, there is also a YAML definition with all the settings that uh, are only some variable through the container instance. On the events, there is no events. So cool, but let's manage using the operator. As you can see, there are a lot of different tabs that allow us to show all the instances. In my case, there is the example controller. I will jump back to the same screen as before. We can also edit the controller or delete it straight away. So what we can do further on? Well, I really like this uh, dashboard from uh, uh, the Ansible Automation Platform Operator because it's very clean and uh, it's easy to find out the resources. As you can see, now we have only one Ansible Automation Controller. There are many other type of instances that we can create 
for example, automation controller backup, automation controller restore, and all of these have a tab under this line. And there are also the automation, automation hub, automation hub backup and restore. Let's create an automation hub. Automation hub is a place where you can store our custom role and collection as um, same as Ansible controller, you can customize the parameter. I created an example one and in a blink of an eye now is spinning up. As you can see, there is no label and it will be created under the AP namespace. At the moment, the status says dash, but uh, sooner it will become uh, running. So automation hub is very important because it allows us uh, to a sort of cache uh, to download the Ansible role and collection from the autom cloud automation hub. This is the enterprise edition of Ansible Galaxy and uh, is very important because there are all the resources from Red Hat and the partner. As you can see, there are many options like uh, the Ansible controller, we can customize all, especially also the source limits and requests. These are very important in my cluster. And uh, what else? We can take a look at the current usage, oh, not yet, the event stream, and let's see the main dashboard what uh, report now. Cool, now on the all instances we can see that uh, the automation controller is running and the automation hub not yet, but in the all instances we can see the overall overview of the current Ansible automation platform in our cluster. Okay, now let's imagine that we would like to take a look in the chronological order about the history of the events that happening. So we need just to click on the events and we can see the streaming event one by one of what happened. As you can see, the operator lifecycle manager is taking care of all the resources and we can see that each of these containers was spinning up in a certain amount of time. So this is the main part of the operator. As you can see, we can check it out uh, which update channel we are using, if uh, the update strategy is automatic or manual, and we can also customize it. And okay, this is the install plan detail, and we can take a look uh, of the YAM configuration. But the Part that I really like is this view because it allows us to see all the type of instances that we can create with the operator. Mainly I uh, focus on the automation controller, backup and restore, and automation app, backup and restore. But there are many, there are more resources. And I really like uh, this release strategy because it allows us to have a clear view about the status of the Ansible automation platform in our Red Hat OpenShift container platform. Yay!